Alright guys, I'm Digitizer. Thanks for coming to episode 3 of my Riven Guide. Let's get straight into it. So, episode 3. Main mistakes made, traversing the map. So, main mistakes made. In this section I'll be going over new Riven players, beginning Riven players, learning Riven players, and even Riven players that have common misconceptions. Main mistakes made, what I mean by that is players who are doing things wrong or just they make a mistake really easily because they don't know how a certain combination works or just that they don't know Riven to her full potential. So we'll start with the first one which is being impatient with the second R cast, maybe even missing it. As you can see by the numbers on screen, Riven's alt damage minimum is 80 plus 60% of her bonus AD. If you get them down to 25% health and then ult at level 6, it's 240 plus 180% of your AD. That is a huge damage increase. You do not want to miss this. So don't throw your spells and then ult just because you need to. Try to find that perfect opportunity to get that kill. Because if they have flash, it, as you see, in higher elo, as soon as you throw your ult and they hear the raw, like, like, the, the scream of Riven when she throws her ult, they will flash to dodge it because they need to, otherwise they will die. So this is a, this is a skill, uh, an ability. The second cast of your R is an, a very very important ability that you need to you need to hit. Overestimating your damage. A lot of Rivens do this. They're like, ah, oh, I'm Riven. I do so much damage. They go in and they die. Why? Because they don't know Riven's limitations. They don't know her capabilities well enough to gauge when she can fight, how she can fight, and for how long she can fight. It's it's all understanding how much damage she does at certain power spikes and how much damage she can take and things like that. People may like say I play with a forty percent CDR build, um, so I get really short cooldown on all of my abilities. You may have people who play like, say for example, Best Riven NA. Best Riven NA plays for a full stat Riven. He doesn't really go for CDR. He goes for full damage, burst, Hydra, BT. He doesn't even get boots most of the time. Like 90% of his games he doesn't even buy boots. And that is because he goes for a burst, kill them before they kill me. I go for a 40% CDR like um, Voxbox does. Voxbox does uh, the 40% CDR build for survivability over bursting the opponent. It's just personal preference and I prefer the 40% CDR to fit my style. I tried the best Riven NA um, build once. I don't like not having the ability to shield every say 3.5 seconds, 3.6 seconds. I have to shield every 6 seconds. And it makes me feel like I'm really weak and vulnerable. So, once again, that's just personal preference. Spamming your abilities, not using your passive. You just press Q. That's all people do sometimes. It's like, oh, I don't need to auto attack. I'm Riven. I just press Q. Press Q. You do, you do, you need, you do not need to do that. You need to use your passive. I've got videos for this. So, what I'll do is, uh, I'll show you one of these now. I'll show you one of my teammates, uh, one of my fellow members of Defective Gaming. Uh, he was kind enough to help me out in this. He's played Riven between five and ten times. I'm not too sure how many times he's played Riven, but he hasn't played her a lot. And he's pretty new to Riven, so it's uh, it's probably like his first time <laughs> under pressure on Riven, because these were ranked games, if I recall correctly. It's under a lot of pressure to perform because I'm recording, and uh, yeah, he 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 makes some mistakes which were really useful for this video. So uh, I'll just show you that uh, the first one now, which is spamming your abilities and uh, not utilizing the passive. So here we have the not utilizing Riven passive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just explain what's going to happen just before I go over it. So what's going to happen here is Riven's going to go onto the Teemo, use all three of her Qs, stun. Auto and then ignite. Timo may die, may not die. Riven isn't sure, so Riven has to flash auto attack to get the kill to finish Timo off. 
what I'm going to explain as it's going through is what he could have done better, should I say. So if I play this out, you can see what I mean, and then I'll do it in slow motion. So he's going to go right on the Teemo. Teemo will blind him, and he'll go right on the Teemo. Cute, 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 stun, or uh, auto attack and ignite. He's not sure. He's not confident whether his ignite would kill the team or not, so he flashes to get another auto in. What Riven could have done here is auto attacked at least once in between his cues, and he wouldn't have needed to flash. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I just showed you once again, just in slow motion, and go over what Riven could have done to get that kill on the Teemo. So Teemo blinds Riven. Here in a moment, he comes up, blinds her. You can see in the bottom left that blind's about to run out, so Q. Could have auto attacked, Q, auto attacked, Q, stun, auto. Teemo would have been dead at this point. But because he's not sure whether Ignite would finish Teemo off, he flashes to secure the kill. As you can see in the top left, if he would have timed Teemo's flash, which you should do, you should always time flashes, Ignites, you should always time summoner spells. He, uh, flash is a 5 minute cooldown, so earlier, so about 2 minutes ago, Timo would have used his flash. He would know that's not up, so he would have got a free kill, and then hit level 6 in about sort of 5 minions. It's quite hard to tell without knowing the exact number of experience he's on. But he could hit level 6 before Timo, and then kill Timo with the, with the flash. Like, he could instantly go on him, because Timo wouldn't be 6. So it's just a couple of things. It's it's not it's a mistake, as in he's wasted his flash, but it doesn't matter that he's wasted his flash because he got a kill for it. But it's just uh, looking at what could have be, uh, what could have gone better in that scenario. Next thing I'm going to be going over is the overestimating the W range. A lot of people misjudge how big Riven's W range is, the stun range. When you ult, you do gain a larger hitbox on the stun. Because of Riven Sword gets bigger, so her Q um, has a larger hitbox, she, uh, she gets a longer auto attack range. So, a lot of people go into alt form, use their W, and they're like, yeah, okay, I know my stun range. And then they go back into, um, say, standard Riven form without the ulted blade, uh, without using Blade of the XL, which is her ult. And they're like, oh, I missed it. Why, is, why didn't it hit? It should have hit. And that's because they're used to the alt form W. So, I've got a, a clip of that now. It does also uh, take into consideration overestimating the damage on uh, Riven. And as I said, once again, it's uh, by a fellow de uh, Defective Gaming member. So, I'll show you that now. Alright, so we've got the final clip here, just for the, uh, the main mistakes made section. And this part is, once again, Riven underestimating the uh, sort of overestimating the alt damage. So he gets a nice E stun there, uh, uses his Qs to get close to Teemo, pops his ult, and in a moment you'll see he just throws his ult out. He's trying to get close to the Teemo, trying to keep up. He constantly keeps getting slowed by the Teemo. He throws his ult out, so he underestimates his uh, W range, and he throws his ult out. If he would have waited the stun, and just kept going, he could have killed the Teemo here. So his his E was up, his Q was up, and his W was up. So instead of throwing out his ult, if I just go back and I'll show you once again, let's go back to this. So we'll go to here, which is where we want to be. So as you can see in the bottom left, his Q's up in four seconds, and his E is up in five seconds. So he uses a stun to try and get Teemo, so he overestimates the W range, and he throws the out out because he thinks he can kill the Teemo. So his Q's up now, and he's using it to get closer. He's already used the W and the ult proc. As you just saw there, just a moment ago, if I can go back very slightly in this clip. Uh, just a bit more, I think. Yeah, let's just play it from here. So if he would have kept this W, but he would have kept this W here, and the ult, that's probably about a second of movement. He actually gets the third Q off here, look, the third Q 
he hits and knocks up Timo. He also dashes into the wall to try and get closer to Timo. If he would have kept his stun, his ult, and not wasted his Qs to um, sort of sort of gap close, should I say, he could have used the next E, which would have been that, to get closer. Q, Q, stun, ult, Q. And that would have been the kill on the Timo. He didn't have Ignite. It's very close to being up in this fight. But if he would have played that a little bit better, just used his abilities in the proper order and would have been playing Riven for a, a bit longer, say a, say play, play Riven for about a week or two, you would have been able to understand the rotation and how you could have killed the Teemo at that point. Okay, another thing about Riven, wasting Qs to gap close. So, Riven's Q is a lot of damage. It's 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 three abilities in one if you want to call it that and using two of your ability two of your cues to gap close it really really cuts down your damage overall you can deal to one target because you can or animation cancel with your Q you can animation cancel your auto attacks so you also decrease the amount of autos you can get in during that combo f further lowering the amount of damage you're going to do to that one target. At max, you should really only use one Q to reach your target. If they are really low and you can kill them, say for example if they're like 500 health, and you can Q, Q, your third Q is going to hit them, or you, or you can Q, 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 so use all three Qs, E, W, and then you can kill them, it's really situational on when you should use your cues to gap close but if someone's full health and you want to fight them all in or you're 75% health and they're 80% health you don't want to waste your cues to gap close if you're looking to get them especially if it's against another all-in champion like Fiora or Diana those two champions are both very all-in like you are so if you waste your cues getting to them they will out trade you very heavily not keeping track of CC and team fights. This is sort of, I would say, an advanced uh, advice because this requires the player to have knowledge of enemy champions and other champions and knowing their abilities and things. I could go back to episode one where I, sh I told you about Renekton's stun, where I knew how long his stun was on a cooldown and he had used it, so I knew I could go in to kill him. That was my knowledge to get that kill on Renekton. So, say for example, you've got a uh, an enemy Morgana. She throws her Q out. You need to know the cooldown, or at least a rough estimation of her cooldown on that Q. Keep a little timer in your head, and then go in before it's back up again. Because, for example, say like they've got um, an enemy Tarek. He stuns you, you'll get blown up instantly. If they have any form of chain CC, they will stun, stare, root, knock you up. They will do everything to stop a ribbon in a team fight, especially if she's fed. Especially if she's fed. So make sure you learn those champions. Make sure that you know what you're going up against. And make sure that you keep track of CC in those team fights. What I'll move on to now is I'll move on to the next part, which is traversing the map. What I'll have here is I will have a sh quick and a short video. Um, it won't have a cam, mainly because uh, <laughs> it will just be quick, short snippets of walls you can jump over. I'll put some music to it as well, so don't worry about it. Um, yeah, it's literally going to be uh, me showing you all of the hops and jumps you can do uh, with Riven. So enjoy.
Thanks for watching episode 3 of My Riven Guide. I'm DG Tizer. I do stream on Twitch, so don't forget to check that out. www.twitch.tv forward slash Lord Tizer. Come in, check me out, follow. Got some great gameplay. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can tune in and watch once again. And as always, I'll see you on the Rift.